Hello everybody, this is Bernie Strom and welcome to my YouTube channel for today's edition of Field of Dreams Baseball. You're here to we're here on the 9th of May and we are going to be watching some really good games today along with simming the first 3 games of the week. At which time, another broadcaster will pick it up, I believe, before the end of today. I don't know when it's going to go on, but we will sim the balance of this particular week uh, by the end of today. Uh, Buckshot, first in. He's ready for some baseball. First in the park, followed by Carlos Chiaz and John DFW is here with us this morning. And uh, let's take a brief look at the standings before we... Take a look and start simming and playing the games. I may be distracted this morning. I just downloaded MLB The Show on the Xbox, and I'm watching the demo in the background here. So please forgive me if from time to time I might pause for a moment. It's a great-looking game. Anyway, Earth Division, Dallas. John DFW's team leads Liverpool by a half a game in the win division. Buckshot's Chico's leads Lehigh by seven games. Canada leads Lancaster by four and a half in the fire. And in the water division, Hadley Lake leads Tampa Bay by one game. Uh, there are great races in all four uh, divisions, even though Chico's in Canada have uh, quite a lead. It is only May, excuse me, June 8th, May 8th, whatever it is, June 8th. It's only... Uh, through June 8th, so we still got a long ways to go. So let's go down and see who's on the schedule today. As SGG Jamie checks in, it is play ball time. First game on the schedule for the 9th of June, it says 1969, but it could be any year, is Vegas at Chicago. Vegas shuts out Chicago one to nothing. Tex Houston, who's had a mediocre 5-5 record this season, turns it up a notch, defeats Reed. He's now 0-2. Cesar Cedena one for three with a stolen base in that game. We move over to Manchester, <clears throat> Manchester Degens. Manchester loses again to Degens. Four to one. Lester the winner. Perry the loser. Both of those. Pitchers are now 500, and Tony Gwynn goes four for four for Manchester. That drops Manchester's record to 27-30. That's an area he has not visited very often. Canada at Hadley Lake. Canada takes out the bats and defeats Hadley Lake 11-5. J.R. Richard, the winner, smolts the loser. Pablo Sandoval hit his ninth home run for Canada. Tampa Bay at Edmonton. Tampa Bay is a loser on the road at Edmonton. Edmonton defeats Tampa Bay 2-1. Valverde the winner. Tanana the loser. Bobby Gritch, 1-4, for four, home run number 10. And Beatles eternally stops by. Hope you're having a good day, Beatles. Berlin at Lehigh. Berlin in a slugfest, 11-8 over Lehigh. Gidry the winner. Brown the loser. Vern Stevens, three for four with a home run and three RBIs. T Ville at Liverpool. T Ville upsets Liverpool four to three. Panic the winner. Matheson, the loser, falls to 11 and six. John Olerud, two for three, his fourth home run of the season. Moving right along, we have Cleveland at Long Island. Cleveland defeats Long Island six to three. Owen, the winner. Palmer, the loser. St. Pete at Florence. These are two teams that give me a hard time. It's about time they played each other. Florence pummels St. Pete 10 to 1. Rio the winner. Powell the loser. Lemon 3 for 5, two, his second home run of the year with three RBIs. Mid Michigan at Amazing. Mid Michigan shuts out Amazing 4 to nothing. Brolio the winner. Odom the loser. It is a Brolio no hitter. That's not the first one I've seen of Brolio. He's pitched more than one no-hitter in our Field of Dreams League. There it is for those of you who want to see it. Brolio wins his sixth game. He's now six and four. Nine innings, no hits, no runs, no errors. Ten strikeouts and four walks. 
he faced 30 batters. It was not a perfect game. San Francisco is next at Hagerstown. Hagerstown defeats San Francisco 5-1. to one. They maintain their surprising 30-27 and 27 start, only four games behind Dallas in the division. Lever the winner. Kovaleski the loser. Dawson went one for three, his eighth home run. And now this is the first game of our doubleheader, Dallas at Chico's. Dallas 34 and 23. Chico's 37 and 21. This is a battle of division leaders, and I'm not going to hit auto. Let's get to the lineups. Cy Young pitching for Dallas. Don Sutton. Pitching for Chico's, Don Sutton is a pitcher I traded to Chico's earlier this season. The lineup for the Diamonds. The lineup for Chico's. Welcome to Tropicana Field for tonight's game between Dallas and Chico's. Cy Young takes to the mound for Dallas. He's made 13 starts on the year, is 7-6 and six with an ERA of 3.12. His first start against Chico's. He'll be opposed by Don Sutton. He's made five starts on the year, is 2-3 and three with an ERA of 6.07. His second start against Dallas, he's 0-1 with a 10.80 ERA against Dallas. That does not look good for Chico's. However, I've seen Don Sutton pitch, and he can throw in a great game every so often. This may be the night. Play ball! The lineups for Dallas. Tolan in center batting first, Justice. The DH batting second, Perez at third batting third. McGriff at first batting fourth. Wagner in left batting fifth. DeRosa at second baseman batting sixth. Freeman in right field batting seventh, Thoreau at shortstop batting eighth, and Stinson catching behind the plate batting ninth. In the outfield, Sheffield for Chico's is in left, Suzuki is in center, Guerrero is in right field. That's quite an outfield. Heine Grow at third, Jason Bartlett at short. Stuffy, Snuffy Sternweiss at second. Frank Chance having a good year at first base. Catching is Hall of Famer Johnny Bench. Pitching, we have Don Sutton. Bobby Tolan steps into the batter's box, and we're underway. Tolan goes down swinging. Sutton strikes him out. David Justice. 13 home runs, 34 RBIs, batting 313. He's having a great year. Sutton pitches. Base hit in the left. Sheffield up with it, throws it back in. We're underway, and Dallas has a runner at first with one out for Tony Perez. Perez hitting 266, 17 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Sutton checking the runner, delivers, base hit. No, Sutton backhands it, the short second for one, back to first, a double play. That ball was headed for right field when Cy Young just backhanded it out of nowhere, threw it to DeRosa, and no, didn't throw it to DeRosa, threw it to Sternweiss, the chance for the out, inning-ending double play. We head to the bottom of the first. No score. What a play by Sutton. Frank Chance steps into the box, hitting 272. 
We're underway in the bottom of the first. Bounding ball to first. McGriff takes it himself to the bag. One up, one down for Vladimir Guerrero. One out. Guerrero hitting 262. Young delivers. There's another good play by a pitcher. He throws it to first. Two up, two down. Bottom of the first for Gary Sheffield hitting 236. Two home runs, 14 runs batted in. Cy Young delivers. Hit to deep left field. Wagner backing up. He's going to watch that as that ball is going to sail into the grandstand. Home run number three for Gary Sheffield. Then Chico's bail bonds take an early one nothing lead. David Lando comes in. Hello, David. Thank you for coming by. And you came in just in time for Gary Sheffield's third home run of the season. It traveled 330 feet. Cy Young now to face Johnny Bench. Bench 263 with 10 home runs this year. Young delivers. Strikes him out his first one of the game. And we go to the top of the second. Chico's leads Dallas one and nothing. Top of the top of the second inning, McGriff, Wagner, and DeRosa to face Sutton, who's staked to a one nothing lead. Here's his pitch. McGriff hits a long fly ball deep to right field. Guerrero's going to put it away in the corner on the warning track for the out. And now we'll face Leon Wagner, one eighty one, seven home runs, twenty four runs batted in. Sutton's pitch. Line drive. Frank Chance doesn't have to move. Puts it away for the out. Throws it around the infield. For Gets back to Sutton as Mark DeRosa steps to the plate. 251. Six home runs. 26 runs batted in. Sutton's delivery. Bounding ball that Frank Chance runs to the bag. Steps on it. Beats DeRosa by a couple of steps. We go to the bottom of the second. One to nothing, Chico's. Cy Young will face Sternweiss Bartlett and Neil. Young's delivery. One down. Bartlett comes to bat, hitting 264. Base hit in the center field. Bartlett rounds first, goes back to the bag as Tolan throws the ball back into the infield with Greasy Neal coming up. 268. Great nicknames out of the dead ball era, I may add. Home run, seven runs batted in. Young checks the runner, gets his sign from Stinson. There goes the runner. Hit and run. That ball's hitting the right field. Freeman is looking at it. It hits off the wall. Bartlett's going to round third. He's going to score easily. Neal goes to second with a stand-up double. And it's two now 2 nothing. Chico's, that's his eighth double of the year, as you can see there. Young doesn't seem to be on his game here early in the early going. As Heine Gross steps to the plate, hitting 218. Runner on second. Here's the pitch. Another long fly ball. Wagner backing up, backing up, and he's got it in front of the warning track. It's a great play. Neal is going to tag up. He's going to slide into third. Wagner's fifth great play of the season, but it wasn't good enough to prevent Neal from reaching third base. With two away and the hit machine, Ichiro Suzuki hitting 270, stepping into the left side of the plate. Young, a right handed pitcher, delivers and he strikes him out to end the inning. The threat goes by the boards. However, Chico Bailbon scores another run. We go to the top of the third, it is two nothing. 
I'm glad I was able to do a Chico's game after hitting the wrong button and simming his last one on my previous broadcast. Don Sutton will face the bottom third of Dallas's order, Freeman, Thoreau, and Stinson. Sutton delivers. Freeman hits it into left. Sheffield has it. In his glove for the out, one down. Ryan Thoreau, shortstop, hitting 204 to face Don Sutton. That's a bunt, I think. We'll find out in a minute. In any event, he's out at first. It is a bunt. And there are now two quick outs here in the top of the third. We go to the number nine hitter, Bob Stinson, hitting 205. Base hit in the right field. And there'll be no no hitter for Don Sutton today. Someone is injured. It is Bob Stinson. He is out for the game. There is a runner at first, but the game neglects to tell us who it is, so we're just going to move on as Bobby Tolan comes to bat. He struck out his first time up. And there's a line drive in the left field, a base hit. Somebody is rounding second. Don't know who it is. It is Lopez in for Stinson. He slides. He's safe. Runners on first and third. With Dave Justice due up. Justice's first time up. Hit a single. Line drive. Sternweiss puts it away. The inning is over. The threat goes by the boards. We head to the bottom of the third. Two nothing Chico's. If you guys haven't noticed, we have Mike Silver's ballpark here. We also have Mike Silver's logos for Chico's and for the Diamonds. He is a whiz when it comes to this graphic stuff. Frank Chance, 270 batter. He grounded his first, his first time up. Top of the order for Chico's. Cy Young delivers. Fly ball to the left. Wagner backing up. And he is going to put it away in front of the warning track. One down for Vladimir Guerrero. He grounded back to the mound in the first inning. He's going to pop it up in the foul territory. McGriff has it for the out. Quick two outs here in the bottom of the third. For Gary Sheffield, who hit a solo home run to left to make it one nothing. Young's pitch, ground ball to McGriff. He takes it to the bag himself. Quick one, two, three inning. We head to the top of the fourth. Two nothing, Chico's. Top of the fourth inning, Dallas will send Perez, McGriff, and Wagner to bat against Don Sutton. <clears throat> uh, Perez grounded into an inning ending double play his last time up. This time he walks. Runner on first. Nobody down. Sutton to face Fred McGriff. He's fly deep down the line in right field. He goes down on... No, he doesn't go down on strikes. That is strike one call. Let me read, see what happens. Perez tried to get a lead, couldn't get it. It was a called strike. Here's the pitch. Fly ball deep into right field. This ball is once again caught by Guerrero in the same exact spot as his first fly out to right field. We now have one down, runner at first, Wagner. Line to first, his first time up. Sutton delivers. There goes the runner. Here's the throw. He is safe. As Tony Perez steals his second base of the year. When Tony Perez steals a base, you knew he either got a big jump or the catcher had a bad throw. In Bench's case, it couldn't have been a bad throw, so it must have been a gigantic jump. 
Perez on second, only one down. Wagner still at bat. He hits the ball up the middle. Bartlett throws to first, but Wagner's going to beat it out. Bartlett surrounded that short ground ball. He did not take a direct route, thereby giving Leon Wagner the chance to beat that infield hit out. Poor play number three for Jason Bartlett, a shortstop for Chico's. As Mark DeRosa strides to the batter's box, grounded a first, his first time up. Runners on first and second. Grounded a grow at third. He's going to throw it to Sternweiss for one, but that's all they're going to get, even though the throw goes over. Easily beaten out by DeRosa. However, there's now two down. Two runners on for Buck Freeman. Buck Freeman in today's game, flied to very deep left field. He strikes out Freeman. We go to the bottom of the fourth as another rally gets wasted. It is Chico's two, Dallas nothing. Bottom of the fourth, bench Sternweiss and Bartlett to face. Cy Young, it's not every pitcher that is active with a an award in his name to be given to the best pitcher of the league. There's a strikeout as Sternweiss comes to bat. Sternweiss struck out his first time at bat. And he strikes out his second time at bat. Strikeout number five for Cy Young. Bartlett singled up the middle. Now he's going to single the left. Bartlett's looking for a good day. He's two for two. Holds at first. And Greasy Neal, who doubled in a run his first time up. Cy Young throws to keep Bartlett close. He is a threat to steal. There he goes. Here's the throw. The tag. He is safe. As Bartlett beats the throw, his 10th stolen base of the season. Cy Young, ready to pitch to Neal. Grounder to second to Rosa up with it. Over to first for the out. No run score that inning. At the end of four, it's Chico's bail bonds, two runs, four hits, no errors, two runners left on base. While the Dallas Diamonds are no runs, four hits, no errors, and four runs left on base. Don Sutton to face Thoreau Lopez and the top of the order, Tolan. He bunted his first time up and was out. He strikes out as Sutton gets number three. Sutton facing Javi Lopez for the first time. Came in for the injured catcher. Here's Sutton's pitch. Fly ball to left field. Sheffield routine play. He makes it into a great play, however, and it's great play number four. Let's see why it was a great play. Sheffield coming in. He got a late jump. Lays out, and he makes the catch. The pitch to Tolan. Back to the mound to chance for the out. Inning over, we go to the bottom of the fifth. Two nothing, Chico's. Well, I know that uh, Buckshot was a little nervous when he saw Cy Young on the mound as a starting pitcher. Facing Don Sutton, who hasn't pitched well this year, but Sutton's been every well, every in every way as good as Cy Young and even better, not allowing a run. Heine Grow, 13 home runs, 315 average. Back to the mound. He's out. Excuse me, I was wrong with Heine Grow. I was reading the wrong number. Grow, no home runs, 239 average. I correct myself. Stand, I stand corrected for Ichiro Suzuki, a home run, 22 RBIs, 269. I got that one right, I think. Line drive, base hit. 
Right field, Freeman up with it, throws it in. Ichiro Suzuki on first base for Frank Chance, who's batting 267. Chance steps in. Suzuki a threat to steal the throw over. Young now glances at first. Here's the pitch to Chance. He struck him out. Two down for Vladimir Guerrero. 260 hitter, 11 home runs. That was something. Let's find out what it was. If I can stop clicking the wrong buttons. It was a pitch out. We're going to throw again. This time Suzuki goes. The throw to second. He's safe. Suzuki is 14th stolen base of the year. He's in scoring position with two down for Vladimir Guerrero. Now has a 1-1 count on him. Young's pitch. He intentionally walks him. Interesting call, putting uh, whoops, putting the tying run on base. That is a no-no in most books that I've read. Young facing Sheffield. Sheffield, three home runs, 15 runs batted in, a 241 hitter. Young delivers. Fly ball to center field. Tolan puts it away for the out. Ends the inning, and once again, the AI proves to be smarter than the announcer. 2 nothing, Chico's. Top of the order, Justice Perez and McGriff, two, three, four hitters, to face Don Sutton. Justice hits it to right, Guerrero under it. He's out, one down. Tony Perez, 265 hitter, 17 home runs, right? Right, 41 runs better than Sutton pitches. Fly in a deep right field, but Guerrero is going to put it away going towards the line. We now have two down here in the top of the sixth for Fred McGriff, who hits 246 with seven home runs, 29 runs batted in. The pitch to McGriff. Fly ball deep to right center field, deep to right center field. That ball is off the wall. Guerrero throws it in to the cutoff man, but not before McGriff goes into second, standing with his ninth double of the year. Okay. McGriff for Dallas is on second for Leon Wagner, who's hitting 185. He's lined to first and singled the pitch by Sutton. Fly ball deep to right field. Guerrero going back. Guerrero going back. He puts it away in the corner. The inning is over, and another potential rally is goes by the boards for Dallas. They're being shut out by Don Sutton, two to nothing. Right about now, Buckshot is thanking me for the trade. Cy Young will face Bench, Sternweiss, and Bartlett, the heart of Chico's order. Young's pitch to Bench. Strikes him out, number seven. Sternweiss, 0 for 2 on the day. Strikes him out, eighth strikeout for Cy Young. Can he make it three in a row? Bartlett is going to be a tough customer. Two hits and two at-bats. Struck out the side. Cy Young has number nine. We go to the top of the seventh. Same score, 2 nothing. Chico's. Sutton this inning will face batters 6, 7, and 8 to Rosa Freeman and Thoreau. Sutton's pitch to DeRosa. Fly ball to right center field. Guerrero backing up. He puts it away on the run. One down for Buck Freeman to bat. 215 hitter. 0 for 2 in the game today. Pops it up behind the plate. Looks like it may be going in the stands. It does. 
Johnny Bench puts his mask back on, gets down behind the plate, gives Sutton the sign, the delivery to Freeman. He struck him out, number four for Don Sutton, and he may not be Cy Young, but he's pitching like Cy Young. As the shortstop Thoreau comes up with two down, nobody on in the inning, he's 0 for 2 on the day. Ground ball back to the mound, Sutton. To chance, the out, we go to the bottom of the seventh. We head to the bottom of the seventh, two nothing Chico's. Uh, you are watching Cy Young pitch against Don Sutton. Cy Young is MV's favorite pitcher from dead ball. However, Cy Young is being out Cy Young by this Don Sutton as we check the box score. Sutton has pitched seven innings of five hit ball, struck out four and walked one. Cy Young has pitched six innings. Allowed two runs, both earned, struck out nine, walk one as we head to the bottom of the inning. Neil Gro and Suzuki to face Cy Young. The first pitch. Fly ball to center field. Tolan backing up. Tolan backing up. Tolan with the catch on the warning track. One down. Heine Grow, no home runs, 18 runs batted in, 239 batting. I got that right this time. Here's Cy Young's pitch. And he hits it on the ground to DeRosa at second, to McGriff at first. Quick two up, two down, bottom of the seventh. For Ichiro Suzuki, who is one for two today. Fly ball in the shallow right field. Freeman with the catch, the out. We head to the top of the eighth. Two runs, five hits, no errors for Chico's. Dallas, no runs, five hits, and no errors. Okay, top of the eighth. Lopez, Tolan, and Justice to face Don Sutton. Lopez, 0 for 1, came in as a replacement for the injured catcher on Dallas. Grounded a third. Grow scoops it up across the diamond. Easy out. Chance puts it away. One down. Bobby Tolan, one for three in the game today. And he's going to smack a base hit in the left field. Now has two hits. Sheffield throws it in. Tolan goes back to the bag. A definite threat to steal. Will he steal in front of David Justice, who has 13 home runs and 34 RBIs with a 314 batting average? Let's find out. Throw to first. Tolan gets back. Throw to first again. Gets back one more time. Tolan takes a little shorter lead, which is what Sutton wanted, and he strikes out ju Justice for the out. Two down now, runner on first for the Dallas Diamonds. And Tony Perez steps into the batter's box, 0 for 2 on the day. Sutton throws to, over to first, trying to slow Tolan down. Not sure he did it. In any event, Tolan's goes to second on the second walk of the day for Don Sutton, who will now face... Fred McGriff, who's one for three in the game so far. The delivery by Sutton. He strikes him out, number six. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, 2 nothing Chico's. Like I said, Don Sutton is pitching like Cy Young. Cy Young is pitching really good, but Don Sutton is beating him two to nothing. 
In the bottom of the inning, the top of the order, Chance followed by Guerrero and Sheffield. Chance hits a blooper into right field for a base hit. Round second. Rounds first goes back to the base as the throw comes in the second. Runner on first. I don't think I've ever seen Frank Chance on first when he hasn't attempted to steal. Vladimir Guerrero hitting 260. There he goes. Here's the throw. He is safe, and they are a stealing machine today. His 10th stolen base of the year. Cy Young's muttering something to himself. He may be upset with the throw Lopez made, but we'll never know because Vladimir Guerrero steps into the batter's box, hitting 260. We're going to... He's going to intentionally walk him again. Sheffield. Three home runs, 15 RBIs, a 239 average. What's Cy Denton going to do? He's going to walk him. Now Cy Young has the bases loaded here in the bottom of the eighth. Nobody out. And he faces hitters four, five, and six with the loaded with bases loaded. I think that's what he wants. Bench over three today. Here's Cy Young's pitch. That ball smacked back up the middle. One run will score. Guerrero rounds third. He's gonna score. Sheffield is gonna go to third on the throw home. And there you have it. It's a doubt. He's doubled the score. Chico's bail bonds. In the bottom of the eighth with nobody out, leads the Dallas Diamonds four to nothing. John DFW says, my bats have holes in them. Well, I don't know if they have holes in them, but they're not hitting. Sternweiss, hitting 314 with 11 home runs, 33 runs batted in. He has struck out three times today. I had to check it to believe it. Here's Young's pitch. That ball is hit on the ground to short. It's only one play because it was hit too softly as to first. Runner number five scores. And I would say this game is in blowout territory for Jason Bartlett. Two for three. Runners, runner on second base. Grounded a first. McGriff takes it himself to the bag. Bench goes to third. Greasy Neal, one for three. He's going to hit a line drive. It's going to hit the ground. Young is going to pick it up. He's going to throw to McGriff. They're going to get him. The end of eight scores five nothing. Chico's. That looked like a line drive, but it was a ground ball to the pitcher. You'll have to forgive me. Taking a sip of coffee as we go to the top of the ninth. If Dallas is to do anything, it's going to begin with Leon Wagner hitting 184. Wagner today, one for three. Fly to right. Routine. One out. DeRosa, 247 hitter. He's 0 for 3 today. Mark Lepke coming into pinch hit. I noticed the computer with one out in the ninth inning likes to send in pinch hitters, and Sutton strikes them out. That's what happened in my game yesterday. We're down to the final out for Dallas. Freeman's up. Will the computer pinch it for him, or will they let Sutton pitch to Freeman? They're going to let him pitch. Fly to right. Guerrero under it. Game is over. Chico Bail Bonds defeats the Dallas Diamonds 5 to nothing. Chico's five runs, seven hits, no errors. Dallas, no runs, six hits, no errors. And we go to the box score. Dallas doesn't have too many highlights offensively. Tolan was two for four. 
Perez walked twice, and I think those are the offensive highlights for Dallas. Chico's, on the other hand, had Bartlett at two for four RBIs from the middle of their order. Sheffield bench and Sternweiss uh, knocked in four of the five runs. The other done by Neal. Let's check that injury out. Stinson out today only. The game's MVP is Don Sutton. Throws a shutout. Buckshot's happy with me today. And let's go to the rest of today's schedule. Only one game on tap left in the day. It's Carpathian and Lancaster. Lancaster wins 3-1. to one. Quayar the winner. Wetland the loser. We go to the 10th of June here. On the schedule, briefly going over the division leaders, Chico's now eight games ahead, of, games ahead of Lehigh. Dallas, a half a game ahead of Liverpool. Hadley Lake, a game ahead of Tampa Bay. And Canada, four and a half games in ahead of Lancaster. Manchester at DGENs. MV's team wins four to two. Webb the winner, just the loser. Moving on to game number two. As, Dal- as Aaron Reed comes in, thank you for coming by, Aaron. You're welcome, Buckshot. I always enjoy doing your games, even though it didn't seem like it when I simmed the last one. Game number two on the 10th, Tampa Bay at Edmonton. Tampa Bay having a good year at 34-26. and 26. They're a game behind Hadley Lake, and they shut out at Ed- Edmonton. Linsicum defeats Kuzman. Linsicum nine and two. Kuzman four and five. Linsicum threw a no hitter. That's two no hitters I've seen in two days. I made a trade proposal to Tampa Bay for Linsicum. I don't can't wonder why he turned me down. Who wouldn't want Claude Osteen for Tim Linsicum? Linsicum. Sorry, I have a hard time pronouncing some words as my tongue gets tied. Tampa Bay hits by Molina Kemp and Teixeira and three hits by Murray Wills. Nobody hit for Edmonton. He faced 28 batters, walked two batters. There must have been a double play in there. The MVP of the game, of course, the man who threw the no-hitter. Great game by Tampa Bay. Vegas at Canada. Um, I come to Canada in mid-June for, I think, a four or five game series, and he always beats the crap out of me. But I beat him in this game. Singer defeats Alexander 5-1. to one. McCann, two for four with his third home run. Makes me smile as we move to Berlin and Lehigh. Berlin defeats Lehigh 3-1. to one. Lehigh, a preseason favorite to win its division, falls to an even 500. At 29 and 29, Halliday the winner, Bowery the loser. T Ville at Liverpool. Liverpool, one half a game behind Dallas. Will they keep pace? They do not. T Ville for the second game in a row upsets Liverpool. Mays the winner. Sakati the loser. Brock two for four, his fifth home run. Oh. Oh, excuse me, Liverpool was a game and a half back. My mistake. I read the wrong number. I do that often. You'll have to forgive me. Although I love announcing games and I love calling games, you can all guess that this probably isn't my profession. Cleveland at Long Island, 4-2 to two Cleveland. I'll truck the winner. Flanagan the loser. St. Pete at Florence, my two nemesis teams playing each other. Florence sneaks by St. Pete. Seven to six, Lola Chova Tatum. Shock two for two is fourth home run and a double. San Francisco at the up and coming Hagerstown. Hagerstown squeaks by San Francisco nine to eight. Negro the winner. Clemens one and six, the loser. Henry Aaron, two home runs, 14 on the year. Hagerstown now keeps pace in the Earth Division. They're only three games back. Hadley at amazing. Hadley Lake squeaks by amazing 
four to three. Cooper the winner. Jackson the loser. Utley four for four. Home run number 10. And we end the 10th. Carpathian and Lancaster. Carpathian defeated by Lancaster. I know that uh, Night Raven hates me doing his games because he loses, but you won the last one. So we're even today, one and one. Candelaria the winner. My pal, Fred Tony, the loser, six and seven. Seymour, two for five, 18 home runs. His 18th home run of the season. As you can see on the top right of the screen, Cy Seymour leads the league in hitting for Carpathian. We go now to the 11th, which is the last day we're going to play. We will play Tampa Bay at Lancaster. That's the last scheduled game. Big Clue expressing his pleasantries to Carlos. Michigan, mid-Michigan at Chicago. The game is 6-1, to one, mid-Michigan win. Wainwright, the winner, Musina, the loser. Tome, one for two, home run number 11. For MV, Manchester at Lehigh. Manchester gets his butt kicked. Lehigh wins 10 to four. Drabeck, the winner. Ashby, the loser. Willie Mays, two for three, his 18th home run of the year. Moving right along, Carpathian has now gone to Florence. Carpathian. Scores 15 runs and defeats Florence 15 to 7. McGinnity the winner. Wilson the loser. Reese, four for five, two RBIs in the game. Vegas at Canada. Vegas is pitching staff gets murdered 13 to 7. Sedano, however, for Vegas goes two for three with a seventh home run and a stolen base. I'm one and one in Canada. To me, for me, that's a victory. Berlin at Chico's. Berlin defeats Chico's five to three. Perez the winner. Tom Seaver the loser. He's seven and four. Goose scotches with his seventh save of the season. T Ville at Long Island. T Ville off a couple of wins. He loses today. Long Island defeats him four to three. Russell the winner. Bolin the loser. Cleveland at Hagerstown. Hagerstown loses six to five. Cleveland's winning pitcher, White, he's seven and six. Middleton, the loser. Galarraga, two for five with his 10th home run. St. Pete at Edmonton. Two to one Edmonton, Oswalt over Guthrie. San Francisco at Liverpool. Liverpool wins eight to three. Plank, the winner. Bagby, the loser. Big Clue gets his win. Hundley two for four with his first home of the year. Dallas at Dijens. Well, I don't know what to say, Mike. Dallas wins at Dijens 23 to nothing. I don't know that Mike's here, but if he is, close your eyes. You're going to look at this box score. Dallas, 23 runs, 19 hits, no errors. Saberhagen, Mike's favorite pitcher. For those people trading out there, if you want Brett Saberhagen, I bet you could get him for a bucket of balls. An inning and two-thirds, five hits, seven runs, all earned. He is now 0-8. Maddox, the winner, 12-0 on a 12-game winning streak. Let's look at the extra bases here. There's got to be extra bases, right? Home runs, McGriff hit his eighth. Thoreau the fourth, DeRosa the seventh, Justice hit his 14th. DeRosa and Tolan hit by pitches, that would make sense. And Gred Maddox is the MVP of the game. Congratulations, Dallas, for that big victory. Hadley Lake and Amazing. Hadley Lake loses today to Amazing, 8-2. to two. Christians is the winner. Cohn the loser, he's 9-3. and three. Cohn on his way to Vegas, will be there on July 1st. He's on a slow train. And my second game of today's doubleheader is Tampa Bay at Lancaster. Tampa Bay, only a half a game out of the division, can tie with a victory. Lancaster, five games behind, 
Canada, but only two games behind him in the loss column. And a victory will put him closer. And let's hit the play button. Let's go. For the Deluge Dodgers, we will have Bert Blylevin facing Bert Hooten, a battle of the Berts. There are the lineups. Here we are. Welcome to Memorial Stadium to tonight's game between Tampa Bay and Lancaster. Burt Blylevin takes the mound for Tampa Bay. He's made 12 starts in the year and is 7-1 and one with a terrific 2.61 ERA. It's his second start against Lancaster. He'll be opposed by the other Burt, Hooten. For Lancaster, he's made 10 starts as 4-3 and three with also a good ERA of 3.64. It's his first start against Tampa Bay. Lancaster's catcher Joe Maurer is riding an 11-game hitting streak at 75 degrees, wind speed 15 miles an hour. It's in from center field. Will that affect the long ball? Let's go down to the field and find out. Play ball! Once again, I'd like to thank Mike Silva for this beautiful stadium. I believe that's yours, Mike, along with the logos for both Tampa Bay and the Fighting Amish. Tampa Bay's batting order is Crawford at first, batting first, Madlock at third, batting second, Sims catching third, Gritz at second base, hitting fourth, Howard, the DH, batting fifth, Harrelson in right field today, he, that's a surprise start, batting sixth, Baylor in left, batting seventh, Wills at shortstop, batting eighth, and Kemp in center field, batting ninth. In the field for the Amish, Fighting Amish, Dusty Baker. I think that's a little different description than the Amish. In left, Paul Blair in center, slick fielding center fielder. Reggie Smith, one of my favorite ex-Red Sox players in right. Brooks Robinson, the best fielding third baseman to ever play the game at short. That's third. At short is Mark Belanger. Could be one of the best shortstops, fielding shortstops in baseball history at short. To, to complete 75% of an or, all Orioles infield, Davey Johnson at second. And at first, a guy I've been trying to get for a year and a half, Steve Garvey. Joe Maurer catching with his 11-game hitting streak. Burton Hooten Hoot pitching. Sam Crawford stepping in, hitting 284. Here's the first pitch. We're underway. Ground ball to Brooks Robinson, a great play. What a surprise. He's out. That's only Brooks Robinson's 16th great play of the season. Hooten now to face Matlock, a 224 hitter. That ball hit deep to left field. Baker going in the corner. He's going to put it away just in a fair territory, two up, two down. As Duke Sims strides to the plate, Sims hitting 164. Fly to right center, Reggie Smith has it. Quick top of the first, Tampa Bay nothing, fighting Amish coming to bat. You know, you look at those 164 averages, the 200 averages, and one might think those are terrible. And you'd be right if you were comparing it to the average baseball league. But this baseball league is full of all-star pitchers, all-star players, and gold glove fielders. And a 164 is not a 164. It's Believe me, it's higher. And a 220 hitter in real life probably hit 250, 260, 270 in his regular season uh, against regular teams. So even though the averages are down, they're not representative of the quality of the hitters as Paul Blair – Steps to the plate, batting 237 with nine home runs, and here's a perfect example of what I mean. Bly Levin's pitch walks him. Blair, a big threat to steal at first. Bly Levin throws. 
Sims up with it. Not even an attempt. Number seven stolen base for Paul Blair. In our league, there are so many speedy runners. A single is almost a double if there's nobody on second base. The pitch to Garvey. That's a base hit in the right field. Blair's rounding third, going to score easily. Steve Garvey knocks in the first run of the game for the Fighting Amish. It's one nothing as Reggie Smith comes up. Smith, a 278 hitter. Bly Levin's delivery strikes him out. Garvey still at first for Maurer and his 11-game hitting streak. Here's the pitch. It's now a 12-game hitting streak as Ken Harrelson takes it on the hop. Garvey holds it second. Two hits for the Fighting Amish here in the bottom of the first. Bly Levin to face Morneau. Morneau hitting 325, so you never guess what 325 is in this league. Fly ball deep in the right field, backing up Harrelson. He's just going to watch it hit the wall. Harrelson takes it off the hop. Garvey scores. Right behind him is Maurer. Morneau ends up on second base, his 11th double of the year, and the fighting Amish off to a quick 3-0 lead. Dusty Baker hitting 215. Pretty soon, someone's going to be start warming up in the bullpen as this fly ball is into deep center field, but Kemp has it for the out. Morneau goes back to second. Two down. Brooks Robinson. 224 this season. He strikes out. Inning is finally over. At the end of one, the Lancaster Fighting Amish three. Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers. Nothing. Top of the second, Gritch, Howard, and Harrelson to face Bert Hooten. The pitch. Grounded a third. Robinson gobbles it up to Garvey for the out. One up, one down for Frank Howard. No picture on Frank Howard. Let's fix that. Uh, that's as good as any. Frank Howard has a picture picture on the screen. Now he has a pitch from Hooten. Strike he strikes him out. At least he looks good striking out. Ken Harrelson, only been up 10 times this year. Is that what I'm looking at? 18 times, three hits. You'll have to forgive my eyes. Sometimes I don't see right, but he walks. Harrelson on first. A moderate runner when it comes to steals. Hooten to, Hooten to face Baylor with 276. He has 10 stolen bases, so if he gets on, he's a threat. Throw to first. He gets back there. Fly ball in the left. Baker backing up. Baker looking up. He just watches this ball sail into the grandstand for a two-run home run. And now the score is a little closer. It is three to two. Home run number seven for Don Baker. He That ball traveled 375 feet. Murray Wills, the famous shortstop. From the Dodgers. Hits a slow roller to Belanger. Absolutely no chance to get him at first. There is an error as Mark Belanger made an error attempting to hurry that play as Wills would have beat it out anyway, but they give Belanger the error. Not only is Wills a threat to score, a attempt to steal, Wills is guaranteed an <clears throat> attempt to steal is the number nine hitter Kemp steps to the plate. 
There he goes. No throw. Wills in with stolen base number 30. In the season he was drafted from, he stole 104 bases. Kemp now can knock him in with a single and tie the game. Here's the pitch. The throw to second. Wills is safe. Ground ball up the middle. Hooten stabs it, throws to first for the out. Inning is over. We go to the bottom of the second. Lancaster three, Tampa Bay two. Here we go. Lancaster is going to send Belanger Johnson and Blair to the plate to face Burt Blylevin. Boy Levin's pitch struck him out. Johnson stepping to the plate, hitting 295. He's going to be first on first on an error by, by Sam Crawford, his first error of the year. Johnson at first, not a threat to steal for Paul Blair. Blair is. Hitting a fly ball deep to left field. Baylor under it. Puts it away. It was actually a moderate fly ball, not deep. Ball comes back in two outs. Johnson still at first to face Steve Garvey, who knocked in the first run of the game. Here's Blylevin's pitch. That ball's hit in the right field. Garvey's second hit. Johnson is going to go to third. The throw's just going to come in a second. And... Lancaster is threatening again to score with two outs as Reggie Smith, who struck out his last time up, has runners on first and third. Blylevin throws. He walks him. Threat is a little deeper as Blylevin walks his second batter. Joe Maurer extended his hitting streak his last time up, lining a single into the outfield. Foul ball. Blylevin throws. Routine grounded to Gritch. He's up with it. He's going to throw to Crawford for the out. The error doesn't hurt. The walks don't hurt. We go to the top of the third. Fighting Amish 3-2 over the Deluge Dodgers. In the top of the third, as I sip my morning coffee here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as the clock ticks just past 11, we've been on for a little over an hour. Tampa Bay will send Crawford, Madlock, and Sims to the plate against Bert Hooten. His pitch, Crawford 0 for 1 in the day. Flies to right field. Reggie Smith staring into the sky, puts it away for the out. Madlock also 0 for 1, Hooten throws. Another fly ball to Reggie Smith. Smith, a busy guy here in the top of the third. Two down for Duke Sims. And like everybody else, he's 0 for 1. He struck him out. Quick inning. We go to the bottom of the third. 3 2, Lancaster. Bottom of the third, Morneau will face. Bly Levin followed by Baker and Robinson. Bly Levin's pitch. Ground ball to second. Great play by Gritch to Crawford for the out. Bobby Gritch's 12th. Great play. We have Orioles all over the place in today's game. Bly Levin to face Baker 0 for 1. The pitch. Struck him out. Two down quickly for a Baltimore Oriole from his original team, Brooks Robinson, 0 for 1. He rolls it to Wills at short. He's going to have to hurry the throw. He is nabbed by a half a step. The inning is over. We go to the top of the fourth, 3-2 Lancaster.
like to take a minute, acknowledge everybody that's in the chat. Big clue, John GFW, Carlos Yez, Dave Lando, Buckshot's here, Aaron Reed is here. MV is here, hopefully still here. Is that it? Oh, I got everybody. Steve Tate is here. That's everybody I can see. Top of the fourth inning, Gritch, Howard, and Harrelson to face Bert Hooten. Hooten gets his third strikeout as Frank Howard comes up. 0 for 1. Howard bangs it into the left field corner. He rounding first, heading for second. Baker up with it. It's going to throw to second. And Belanger cuts it off. 13th double of the year for Frank Howard. Hooten to face Ken Harrelson. Ken Harrelson in real life. I remember him very well as the Red Sox signed him at the trade deadline to a free agent contract in 1967 to replace the Tony Canigliaro in right field who had just 10 days earlier been beaten by Jack Hamilton of the California Angels. Ground ball is short. Howard's going to hold. Garvey's going to put it away for the out. Two down. Howard's still at second for Don Baylor. The pitch to Baylor. Ground ball up the middle. Johnson to first for the out. Inning is over. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still three to two. Amish. Belanger, Johnson, and Hooten to face Burt Blylevin. Belanger 0 for 1. He walks. He's still 0 for 1. Goes to first. A threat to steal for Johnson. Johnson's 0 for 1 in today's game. There goes Belanger. There's the throw by Sims. He is safe. Stolen base, number 4. I think someone on the uh, Discord chat this morning mentioned on how many runners were being thrown out stealing. Not in today's games. They're not. They're all making it. As Davy Johnson, as you can see, is a 280 hitter in real life, I think. Yep. Here's the pitch. Grounder to Crawford. He's up with it. Belanger going to third. Crawford going to first. One out, Belanger, third, a threat to score. He's on there with less than two outs as Paul Blair steps into the batter's box. In real life, a 285 hitter. In our league, a 236 hitter, which in my mind is equivalent to a 285 hitter. The pitch by Blylevin. He strikes him out. Blylevin bears down. Now he's got two outs. The infield and outfield can be less alert. They don't have to be in as close to try to cut that down that runner. As Steve Garvey, two for two today, steps in against Blylevin, hits the ball right back to the box to Crawford at first for the out. Inning is over. Bland Belanger stranded at third. We go to the top of the fifth, three, two, Lancaster. Wills Kemp and Crawford do up. Bert Hooten's pitch. Ground ball back to the mound. Hooten underhands it to Garvey. One up, one down for Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp hitting 263. Ground ball to third. The vacuum cleaner picks it up, throws to Garvey for the out. Human vacuum cleaner, Brooks Robinson gets another assist. Garvey gets another put out. And Sam Crawford, who is 0 for 2, steps in. Garvey picks up the slow roller, steps on the bag for the out. Inning is over. We go to the bottom of the fifth. 3-2, fighting Amish. Smith, Maurer, and Morneau to face Hooten. Smith 0 for 1 in the game. 
That ball is out of here. A rocket for Reggie Smith. Home run number seven. Right off the bat, that ball was gone. 314 feet down the right field line. Four to two is Lancaster has now doubled the score on Tampa Bay. And Walter Johnson is coming in. Can you imagine you're hitting the starting pitcher? Not well. you got four runs. Probably lucky to have them. You, Reddy Smith hits a home run, and your reward as the home team for hitting so well is now Walter Johnson comes in to pinch against you. Maurer, one for two. Base hit. Maurer doesn't care who's on the mound. Maurer reaches first. Justin Morneau doubled off the wall and grounded to second. Fly ball deep in a right field. Backing up is Harrelson puts it away in the corner for the first out of the inning. Maurer stays at first for Dusty Baker. Baker over two. I'm not sure what that did. I'm going to have to read it because the chalkboard didn't work. Duke Sims made an error. Catcher interference on the play. And I'm sure the chalkboard would have trouble with catcher's interference. So we got nothing. Dusty Baker at first. Brooks Robertson 0 for 2. Johnson's pitch. That ball's up the middle. Wills has it. Flips to Gritch for 1. Over to first. Double play. Ends the inning. No foul. No harm. Or no harm, no foul. I say things backwards all the time, my wife tells me. However, there was a run on Reggie Smith's home run. We go to the top of the sixth. 4-2. Lancaster in the lead. Madlock, Sims, and Gritch now to face Hooten. And that will be a base hit as it gets down. Oh, there's going to be an error as Baker muffs that ball. Madlock goes to second. And that is error number one on Dusty Baker. Madlock on second base. Nobody down in scoring position for Mau for Mauer. Sims, not for Mauer. Mauer's catching. I'm looking at the wrong guy. Sims betting 162, eight home runs. If I get the right guy up, we'll be in good shape. He's going to hit a ground ball to Garvey at first. Madluck's going to advance to third with only one down to face, and the pitcher Hooten to face, Bobby Gritch. Gritch, who's hitting 227, has 10 home runs on the season. Hooten's pitch, that ball's hitting into right field, but it's going to be caught by Johnson before it gets there for the out. And there is now two down. Madlock seems to be still stuck at third. Frank Howard. One for two in today's game. Here's Hooten's pitch. That ball is going to drop over Belanger's head in the left field. Howard has an RBI single, and now the game is 4-3. Lancaster as Tampa Bay gets a little closer. Runner on first, Ken Harrelson. Ball gets away from Maurer. Frank Howard goes to second. He's such a slow runner. That ball has to get a long way away from the catcher. Two down. Runner in scoring position for Ken Harrelson. He strikes out. For strikeout number four for Walter Johnson. We go to the bottom of the sixth, Belanger, Johnson, and Blair to face Walter Johnson. Belanger's out. 
Here's the pitch to Johnson. Johnson to Johnson results in a pop-up. Will's going out into the outfield to catch this one. He does. Two up, two down. Paul Blair. Johnson throws. Fly ball into routine left field. Don Baylor puts it away for the out. We go to the top of the seventh, 4-3 Lancaster. Lancaster will send up Lancaster. Tampa Bay will send up Baylor, Wills, and Kemp. Baylor on the day. 0 for 2. Hooten still on the mound. Fly ball into deep left field. Baker under it. Baker is under it. Baker puts it away. It's a foul ball. Baker just misses it as the ball just goes in the stands. Looked like he had caught it. And it fell into the first row of spectators in foul territory there in left field. Here we go again. That ball's hit to short. Belanger up with it. Throws to first. They got him. One down for Maury Wills. Wills 0 for 2. Base hit. Maury Wills always a dangerous guy. Almost automatically turns singles into doubles if there's no one slowing them up. Kemp steps in. Kemp hitting 262. Well, I'll just keep my mouth shut. I can't believe Wills won't be going. Another stolen base. Number 31. Some, game, some games are unpredictable. This game is not. Tying run on second. Here's the pitch to Kemp. Strikes him out. Two, to, two away. Will's still on second. Sam Crawford, the top of the order, 279 hitter up. Here's Hooten's pitch. That ball's blooped into, oh, another great catch. I thought that ball was headed to right field. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Walter Johnson now in the bottom of the seventh. Will face Garvey, Smith, and Maurer as the Fighting Amish have a slim 4-3 lead here in the seventh inning. Steve Garvey, two for three to face Walter Johnson. That's a grounder to short. Will's up with it. Garvey, not the fastest runner, will be thrown out by two or three steps. One up, one down for Reggie Smith, who rocketed a home run in the right field his last time up. This time he rockets the ball. It's off the wall. Smith rounding first, headed for second. Harrelson chasing after the ball, picks it up, throws it into the infield. Reggie Smith going for second. He's going to need a slide. He is safe with his ninth double. Reggie Smith having a great day. Home run and a double. Maurer today lined a single, grounded a second, and lined another single. Uh, the Lancaster team only was seven hits, but they were timely, and there's the third intentional walk of the game. Morneau today double grounded a second and flied out to the outfield. The pitch by Johnson. He's going to pop it up behind the plate. Sims has a chance. But it is in the stands. Johnson's going to have to do this again. And he struck out Morneau for the second out of the inning. Run is on first and second. Lancaster trying to get insurance run here, sending Dusty Baker to the plate. Baker 
hitting 213 on the season. Johnson delivers. That's a routine grounder that wills it short. He's going to make an error. The bases are going to be loaded. Error number seven on the usually sure-handed Murray Wills. And can Lancaster break this one open with a hit? Let's find out. As Brooks Robinson, 0 for 3 on the day, steps in. Here's Johnson's pitch with the bases loaded. He is going to do something. The ball gets by Sims. That was a strikeout. Johnson and Robinson's going to reach first and a gift fifth run to the Lancaster Fighting Amish by the damp Tampa Bay team. Belanger's pitch, Belanger's swing. Johnson to Crawford. Innings over, but not before Lancaster gets an insurance run crossing the plate on a drop third strike by the catcher Sims. We go to the top of the eighth, 5-3, Lancaster. I try to, when I try to get two games in in an hour and a half, I realize I'm a little slower than some of the other broadcasters, but this is the only way I know how to broadcast a game. Hooten to face Madlock, Sims, and Gritch. And Eddie Watt comes in to replace Hooten. Eddie Watt. Four appearances on the season, five and a third innings, has yet to allow a hit, struck out two, walked three. Another one of those Baltimore Orioles, good fielding, fast, good pitching team that Night Raven drafted. Mark Teixeira is coming in to pinch hit. Line drive. Great play by the pitcher. One down. Great play number one for Eddie Watt. Duke Sims, who dropped that third strike to allow a run to score, is stepping into the batter's box, and he walks. Watt with a runner now on first. His first walk of the day. Bobby Gritch over three. Opposing team still looking for the first hit off of Watt. He struck him out. Strikeout number one, Frank Howard. Two for three on the day. Runner on first, Watt's pitch. Strikeout number two. The inning is over. Watt has just to allow a hit in any of his relief appearances. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Lancaster leads 5-3. Lancaster will send up the bottom of the order, Johnson. And then Blair and Garvey, the top of the order. Johnson's pitch. Gritch has it. Crawford touches the bag for the out. Paul Blair, the top of the order, hitting 234. Johnson throws. Foul ball. Thank you very much, Carlos. Johnson pitching to Blair. Fly ball to the left. Baylor backing up. Puts it away for the out. Two down. Bottom of the eighth. Johnson now facing Garvey. Garvey two for four today. Single to right center and then lined to single and grounded out his last two times up. Johnson throws. Bounding ball to Morgan at third. Long throw across the diamond, but Garvey is going to be out. We head to the top of the ninth, 5-3 Lancaster. If my Lancaster jinx is going to hold for Night Raven, then Tampa Bay needs to score this inning. As they say, unless you tie this game, there's no more game after this. Ken Harrelson, 0 for 2. Johnson up with it to Garvey at first, one down. Don Baylor, one for three in today's game. Dick Hall will come in to replace Watt. He 
He's been in 11 games, 20 innings pitch, 14 hits, 10 strikeouts, four walks, a 2.21 ERA. I've noticed that the Action PC computer likes to put in closers after there's an out or two in the ninth inning. Sure, it would make it sure would replicate real baseball a lot better if the machine could figure out that you need to start the inning with the closer which happens 99 out of 100 times in Major League Baseball. Baylor lines it to Robinson, two away. Murray Wills, the last gasp for Tampa Bay, Hall's pitch. Base hit in the left field. That will bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp, in real life, hit 26 home runs, so he's certainly capable of hitting a home run here. However, in the Tampa Bay lineup, he's hitting 261 with only three home runs. Halls checks Wills. He's obviously not going to steal, right? He strikes out. The game is over. Lancaster defeats Tampa Bay 5-3. And the Bernie Strom Lancaster uh, jinx has come to an end here at the Fighting Amish Home Field Memorial Stadium. We go to the box score. Five, seven, and two for Lancaster. Three, six, and three for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay 35-27. Lancaster 35 and 23. Evenly matched teams, however, today. Howard went two for four for Tampa Bay, only highlight I can see. There are a few highlights in Lancaster. Two hits for Garvey, two hits for Smith, including a screeching home run. Baylor did hit a home run for Tampa Bay. I, please forgive me for forgetting that. It was so far back in the second inning. I had since forgotten. Hooten, seven innings, five innings. Hits, three runs, all earned, a home run. Five strikeouts and a walk. He's the winning pitcher, five and three. Blyleben falls to seven and two, pitched four innings, five hits allowed, four runs, all earned, struck out five, and walked three. A couple of things I like to check just in case. Reggie Smith, the game MVP, no injuries. As we double check the 11th is over. We're going to be on to the 12th. I am not going to do the 12th. The next broadcaster will. So let's just hit that little square. Take a moment to review the standings. I'll zip up the file, post it on Discord, and look forward to the next group of games, whoever may do them. Earth Division, Dallas leads Berlin by one half a game. Liverpool by one game. And I like to say this because I think he deserves some credit for Hagerstown being four games back. In the win division, Chico's with a nominally good lead, not insurmountable, however, over Lehigh. Lehigh. Chico's 38 and 22, leads seven and a half games, seven in the loss column against Lehigh, who's 30 and 29. Canada in the wind division, in the fire division. 42 and 21 has doubled up his losses. He is four and a half games ahead of Lancaster, who's keeping pace. They are four and a half games back, but only two games in the loss column. I'm eight games back at Vegas, but only six games in the loss column. And that's not that bad a lead to make up as we go to the water division. Hadley Lake leading Tampa Bay by a game and mid Michigan by a game and a half. I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by. It's been a wonderful broadcast. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. We will now zip this file up and get it to the next broadcaster. I want to wish everyone a happy Sunday. Hope you have a great weekend, end of the weekend, and we'll see you all on Discord. Talk to you later.